for you guys. Keep the energy high right after lunch. We're going to go ahead and bring on our next guest. Who here is a wholesaler? Can we get some hands up in the air for the wholesalers in the room? Who here is a real estate agent? Who here runs a, a contracting business, they're architects, something like that, right? You know what's common with all of those jobs, I'll call them all of those you know, fields of, of practice? Every one of them, you've got to go to the closing table, right? Whether you're going to ask somebody to do a contracting job, you've got to ask them for the close. Whether you're asking a realtor to sell you a property, you've got to ask for the close. If you're a wholesaler, you're asking that seller for the close. And today we've got El Cerrador himself, Mr. Closer, coming up to the stage. Let's get a absolutely loud, loud round of applause for Mr. Max Jimenez, you guys. We've got the closer coming in, breaking it down today. Round of applause. Let's go, let's go, you guys. El Cerrador. What's up, everybody? We feeling good? We feeling excited? Man, we've had some great uh, presentations today, right? And the day's not over. We got a couple more that are going to be presented tonight, uh, or today, excuse me. So I'm extremely excited to be here. Uh, what a great crowd. Look at that, man. Are you guys, are you guys awake? Say, hell yeah, if I'm awake. I know we came, I know we're, 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 it's after lunch and you know, obviously, sometimes after lunch, the food start hitting us, and we want to take a little siesta. But we're not going to do that today, okay? We're gonna we're gonna be active. But a um, little bit about myself, um, Will and Alex. I met them what about two years ago, three years ago, maybe. Stay connected, uh, and then they came out to one of our workshops, uh, you know, one of our sales workshops, and uh, and ever since then we hit it up Will and Alex. Give it up for them. Give it up for Will and Alex, man. Amazing job that you guys are doing. And I'm honored to be here, bro. You guys know that I don't take these things lightly. Obviously, it takes a lot to speak on stage. And I do this, and I, and I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart, and I appreciate that. So why am I up here speaking? Who the heck is El Cerrador? Who's Max, right? Why am I out here speaking? Let me give you some, some, uh, some uh, background on me, right? I, um, I basically discovered wholesaling at the end of 2015, right? And so same thing like all of you looking for something better, looking for something that I, that I can, you know, change my life with. And I wanted to get into real estate because a friend of mine was involved in real estate years ago. And then the market started, you know, obviously the crash happened and then the market started to uh, change like in 2014. And this buddy of mine, this friend of mine, um, I reached out to him and see if he was doing anything. He said no. So then basically what uh, what happened was uh, he goes, let's start doing it. So I started doing research, and towards the, toward, in 2015, I started going on Craigslist. How many of us remember Craigslist, right? So then I would go on Craigslist, and I see these, these posts that said, uh, buy this property, seven-day close, cash. And I'm like, how the heck am I supposed to do that with my job? Like, <laughs> who's got $200,000 to give up in seven days? So anyway, stumbled upon wholesaling by a guy named Sean Terry. Shout out to him. Uh, that's who I learned. A lot of us learned through him. But anyways, fast forward, right? It took me 11 months to get my first deal. So went to my first event in October of 2015. Um, and then I didn't start doing anything to about the start mid 2016 or sorry, the start of 2016. And guys, there was not information like there is today. You know what I was doing? I was putting out bandit signs and I was in and, and, and the middle of the night. My son and I would go put out bandit signs. And then my wife who's here. Say hello to my wife, Tina. Wave everybody. Wave at her. <laughs> She, she and my daughter would actually help me with the letters. My daughter would put the, 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 uh, the stamps on the letters, and then I would send those out. Back then, you can send 200 letters, and then you get, like, five calls, which is unheard of now, right? You can't send 200 letters and get five calls. You can send 5,000 and get five calls. <laughs> so, then, so then I got my first deal, and, and, and it took October uh, 2016, and then I'll, just, I'll, I'll go pretty fast. I just want to lay some, ground, some groundwork here. And then from there in 2017, I quit my job, my first deal. I took the jump. Obviously, it was a hard conversation. I had to sell my wife, and that's why they call me El Cerrador, right? <laughs> and I've always loved sales. I've always had, I always, I always had a passion for sales. And, I had, and I've always had jobs where I, where I was actually part of sales. So from, 20, from 2017 to 2023, I've been involved in about 400 direct-to-seller transactions completed. Right. This is direct to seller. This is not somebody bringing me the deals. This is not agents working with agents. And then about 100 deals where we where we have joint venture with other with other individuals. 
So, so I say all this because the only reason I was able to do that is because of this. In 2018, I actually decided to take my sales skills to another level, and I went and joined a, a, a certain training program called Sandler, right? I, I ended up paying for that. I got involved. So I've been sales training professionally since 2018. I would say around August. So here's the crazy thing. How many, are, how many of us have heard of ChatGPT, right? If you go on ChatGPT right now and you ask who, which is the best sales training available on the market, and guess who they recommend first? Sandler. So what I'm here to tell you is what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is very credible, right? I'm not just standing here on stage. I've got my face kicked in. The unfortunate thing is the Sandler is not geared to one industry. I had to learn this. So between 2018 all the way up to COVID, I probably went, went to about maybe anywhere between 400 to maybe 450 in-house appointments. I was going to two or three a day. So I have some experience. I have some background. After that, I've probably done thousands upon thousands of sales calls, which I still continue today through my, through my, uh, through my uh, show called The Closers Lab. Who watches The Closers Lab every Friday? A very interesting question, right? How many wholesalers are here? How many have, uh, you know, how many realtors are here? And how many, uh, and, uh, what was the other thing you asked? The last, contractors. And the one common thing between all three of them, they all involve sales, right? Whether you have a team of salespeople or whether you're doing the sales yourself, all, everything has, everything has, uh, every, every one of those industries involves sales, whether you like it or not. Listen to me, wholesalers. Who's, who's just doing wholesaler, wholesaling right now? Raise your hand up high, 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 high. You're not in the real estate business when you're wholesaling. You're in the sales, you're in the marketing and sales business. The byproduct happens to be real estate. So when you're out there talking to sellers, when you're negotiating, the first thing you got to do is you got to be a problem solver first, a salesperson second, and then third, you're a buyer of real estate. The real estate piece is, that, is, is the last. So learn some problem solving skills, learn some sales skills. And that's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today. Things that you need to be doing, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why salespeople struggle. I'm going, to, I'm going to cover three points. Is there more than that? Absolutely. But throughout my experience, building, you know, some, some very, uh, and Will and Alex have been to the office. They've seen the teams. We built a lot of teams throughout the years. And I've narrowed it down to these three things. And you're going to be like, duh, well, why don't you do it? <laughs> right? So let's check it out. Oh, this is the wrong person too. Oh, sorry. All right. Let's talk about why salespeople struggle. Like I said, there are many reasons why salespeople struggle. We can sit here all day, lack of opportunity, uh, you know, whatever, X, X. But today we're going to go personal, okay? We're going to look deep inside. We're not going to blame the market. We're not going to blame the leads. We're not going to blame the managers. We're going to look internally why, are, why salespeople struggle, right? Number one, they don't take their craft serious. They operate on an old belief system, right? And then number three, they don't take enough action. You know what's crazy about this event? Will started, a, started it uh, talking about belief, right? Jason almost broke into my presentation. I went up to him and said, bro, were you looking at my slides or what? <laughs> so, so how do we change our belief? We have to first change our beliefs, right? And I'm going to break these down individually. So remember, number one. A lot of why salespeople struggle is because they don't take their craft serious. Number two, they're operating on an old belief, not belief, belief system. And then number three, they don't take enough action. They seem really simple, right? Like, duh, we should be doing this. And most don't. And here, I'm going to show you some. All right. So here it is, right? They don't take on their craft serious, right? We all heard if you don't respect your craft, the craft won't respect you. That's plain and simple, right? If you don't work on your craft, if you don't work on yourself, if you don't work on the things that, that, you, uh, that you need to work on, well, how do you expect it to reciprocate and give you back? You can't. And these are supposed to pop up individually, but I guess they're all popping up uh, at a time. I don't know if that's the way it was set up or whatever. It's okay. Don't worry about it. So average salespeople only look for Band-Aids. You should see my DMs. You should see my YouTube comment section on Discord. Max, what's that one line where I can drop the price on the seller? 
<laughs> um, Max, what is the punchline so I can go back to the seller and get a price reduction? And then, and then the last one is, Max, what are some of your top phrases to negotiate and, and negotiate at a deeper, deeper discount? And I always look at them and I always say, look, if you're looking for information, I got bad news because acquiring information won't improve your sales performance. You got to remember that. What will? Behaviors will, right? Working on your craft. What is that? Guys that have team members, if you're not role playing on a consistent basis, two times a week, you got to do that with your teams. If you're, if you're on your own, get with the community that you can role play with. Role playing is actually the, the most important, I believe, uh, a, a skill that you can do so that, that, that will create behaviors and, and work on your craft. Role playing is number one. But I always say this, do not just role play making up scenarios. Pick the calls from the week before, the worst calls, and then you get a second opportunity to reenact those. So that way when you go back and get an opportunity on it, you already know what to do because you worked on it, right? Most people make up scenarios or they try to stump the other person, like, don't do that, okay? You gotta build behaviors, right? You gotta make sure that you're asking for feedback as well too. You gotta make, hey, can you listen to this call? Can you, uh, can you uh, tell me how I did here? And I know some of you guys may be on your own, but there's, look, at, look around you. There's people here that you can link up with. So you gotta be, build behaviors. You gotta work on your craft. You gotta take it serious, right? I decided to do that. Now, most of you don't need to invest because it costs a lot, right, to get into a Sandler program, but you don't need to do that. There's a lot of information on YouTube, and I'm gonna tell you how you learn on you, how you learn how to intake the information that you need. I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about that. So what do you guys think so far? Are we good? Are we all gonna work on our craft? <laughs> Moving forward? Or are we gonna DM Max and, and, and ask him for the one-liners? <laughs> Will, I know you've been doing that, bro. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> gotta build behaviors, everyone. We gotta build behaviors. This is important when you're gonna to start to build teams. Listen, if you're on, if you're on your own, you got to get into this habit right now because once you, once you start to delegate or you start to hire and you want to build someone and bring someone in to, say, take an acquisitions role, which I think that's the last thing that you should absolutely do, if you don't have a system, it's going to be wild, wild west. Believe me, I've done it. I've had the circus before, right? You want to call? Boom. Come on. Oh, you want to call too? Boom. You want to call too? Perfect. I had about 10 people dialing at one point. And it was like one morning they're there. The afternoon, they're not, and they're like, <laughs> what the heck's going on here? So you have to get in the habit right now to build this out, okay? Second thing, why do salespeople struggle, right? They operate on an old belief system. Pay attention here, please. I put this in the middle for a reason. This is very important, and, we, and this got touched on a couple of times today, right? A lot of us come to these events. A lot of us, you know, network. A lot of us get on YouTube, but do we really believe what we are actually talking about today? What we're hearing, excuse me, what we're listening to today, right? Here's the thing, right? Check out this quote. It's a cool book called I'm Okay, You're Okay. Very psychology heavy, so it might put you to sleep, but you're going to learn a thing or two of why you think the way you do, why you look at certain things the way you do. So one of the quotes that I like there, it says, at some stage early in our lives, we adopt, adopt a position about ourselves and others that determines how we feel about everything we do. And the, the author is Dr. Thomas Anthony Harris, right? So what does that mean? As we, 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 we grow up, and then uh, Jason touched on this, which I love. You know, we were on the same link wave here. We, when we grow up, we, we actually grow up with bad programming, right? I know I did. The way, I looked at, the way I looked at money, the way I talked to strangers, you know, the way I, I, I looked at relationships, right? I never met my dad. You know, that, that took a toll on me. And as you, as, you, uh, as you get older and you get in specifically in this industry called sales, right? What happens is you bring all that with you. So now you want to go out there and negotiate a deal that's $500,000. And subconsciously, I mean, consciously, you're probably, you're, you're, you're probably not thinking about it. But while you're in the middle of that negotiation, guess what? Your subconscious starts to creep up and you're like, hey, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve this deal, right? Remember? What do you think? You think you're going to make this money? <laughs> How many of us have been through that, right? So what we need to do is 
how do we overcome this, right? And it's not an easy task, guys. We have to work. Again, this is why, why social media sometimes drives me crazy because it waters down all the stuff we're talking about today. You know, the mindset. Mindset is very important. However, social media waters it down. And when we look at it and when, when we come up here, Jason comes up here, all these other speakers come up here and talk about mindset, it seems really watered down, but it is very important, right? How do we do this? We need to adopt new information to rewire our belief system. It's not going to change. All you can do is rewire it by what? Turning off the noise. I did this when I first started. My wife's here. She, she got, she, I was driving her, I would drive her crazy because when I first started uh, wholesaling, which I was really happy that I, that I learned from where I learned from because it was 80% mindset. Like I had to rewire myself. So at the house, I stopped watching movies. In the car, I stopped listening to music. Uh, I was consistently listening to podcasts. I did that for about four months, four to six months, right? That's why when we hire a team member, we don't give them a sales book. Absolutely not, we don't give them a sales book. The, the book that they get when we hire them is called The Power of Ambition by Jim Rohn. If you guys don't know who Jim Rohn is, you got to look him up. Jim Rohn was one of my first mentors. Obviously, there's different mentors, right? Mentors that are living, mentors that have passed. Jim Rohn was one of those that, have, that has passed. So every salesperson that comes, that joins our team, they don't get a sales book. They get a, they get a mindset book. Why do you think that is? Because we don't know what they're coming with, right? We hire based on our core values, and we fire based on our core values. But what we do is we try to help them to realize like you're in, a, you're in a position that's going to require a lot from you. And if you don't rewire your mindset, guess what? You're not going to last in this position. And we tell them, I'm up front, like, listen, and we have a little job form that they fill out. One of the questions is like, hey, wholesaling is not as easy as you see in social media. It's not all that glamour and glitz. What do you think about that? And then we get the real answer, right? Because everybody loves the end result. So salespeople especially Love the end result, right? Because salespeople like love making money. <laughs> so we don't give them a sales book. We give them the book. Again, it's called, if you guys are writing this down, The Power of Ambition. And I highly recommend that you get the audio book because it's Jim Rome who's actually uh, narrating it. It's a very powerful book. Very, very powerful book. So you got to turn off all the noise. You got to deposit new information. But here's where you have to be careful, okay? Too many of us, we hear something new. We talk to Strat, we talk to Jason, we talk to Will. They're like, hey, I just read this book. We go and grab it, and then we start reading it. Do we see a problem there? Does anybody see a problem there? A, a book that's recommended to you? It's not a trick question. <laughs> Here's the pro there is a problem with that, and I'm going to tell you what it is. is look, look at the last line. It says, you have to learn for just now and not just because. Too many of us uh, basically pick up material or we go on YouTube or we pick up books and we read it just because it was recommended. Every time I'm recommended a book, it goes into a file. I buy it. I buy it on Audible or I buy it, I buy it through Amazon, right? And what I do is if it's not meant for me to read at the time that I'm going through whatever I'm going through, I don't read it because I can't have it take away my focus. And here's the problem. If you read a book, if you, uh, if you watch a podcast, oh, sorry, if you listen to a podcast, if you watch a YouTube video and you don't do the things that you're reading or watching or listening to, all you're doing is entertaining yourselves. You're not educating yourselves, right? And this goes back to working on your craft. We want to jump from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. Stay focused. Work on your craft. What is it that you need with? Are you, are you struggling on your script? Are you struggling on your introduction? Are you struggling with negotiations? Are you struggling at the, at the money part? Are you struggling... That's how you got to be able to, to, to grab and enter the information. And what happens within time, you should see some of our sales guys, when they come in, they look like, you know, that deer in the headlight look, like, I don't know what's going on here. But once the 90 days comes up, like, it starts to change, right? Like, they, their mindset, they look at things different. Uh, they, you know what I mean? They start to act different. And that's the one thing you have to remember is you're not going to be an elite uh, closer at a high level if you don't change what you believe, all that old belief system. You got to work on that, right? That's the, that's the second thing is got to get away from that old belief system. Last thing, very obvious. Why do salespeople struggle? Because they don't take enough action. Am I right, Alex? It's people that get the information and do absolutely nothing with it. 
I, I have a sales intensive. I'm not here to pitch you, so don't, don't get angry. Don't throw tomatoes yet. <laughs> I have a sales intensive, and some of you guys are part of it. Will, and, you know, they've been part of the workshop, and Jesse's back there. He's part of it. A couple of guys, Stratton. And I always tell people this. I discourage you from coming to the intensive, actually, because here's why. Most people want to pay to get better, and that's absolutely the wrong way to think about it, right? If you guys have ever messaged me about the intensive, I put you through a little process. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Go to my YouTube channel. Everything I teach on the intensives in there. But you got to make put in the work. If you can put in the work and create this process for yourself, come back and we'll talk about being on the intensive. And guess how many people come back? Those that wanted to pay. Settle. Zero. None. Right? Because they're not ready yet. They're looking just for that quick fix that we talked about earlier. Right? They don't want to take action. I'm telling them what to do. Like, you know, I'm, I'm telling them what to do, and, and they don't do that. So we don't take enough action. Why? Because a lot of us need the, all the data. Analysis paralysis. You know, one thing is, I'm an audit that's one of the things that you guys want to do is figure out what type of learner you are. I'm an auditory learner, which means that I, I, I listen to things. That's why I love audibles. That's why I watch YouTube. Like, my, on my TV, there's no regular TV. It's all YouTube. That's all it is. My YouTube channel looks crazy. It's like, what's wrong with Max's brain? Because <laughs> I love listening to stuff. I love learning. And I do it from hearing. But you got to find out how, you, how are you a learner, right? So that way it can help you and that way you can take action and, and stop being stuck. Scared of failure. Here's the bad news. Failure's part of the process. Am I right, Jason? Am I right, Dean? <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> failure's part of the process. So if you try to avoid failure, if you try to avoid mistakes... There, you're going to have a hard time. Embrace it. That's how you get better, right? That's how you get better. But you won't if you don't take action. And then the last thing is that fear of rejection. That goes back to the belief system, right? <clears throat> the biggest thing that salespeople, why salespeople struggle is be, they're scared of that big, big N-O. No, I don't want to work with you. But they love, they love that, let me think about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, this seller liked me. <laughs> In one of my presentations that I have, I have this guy, he's holding an iPad, and he's, he's cheesing, right? He's talking to a couple, and he's got a house on the iPad. And then I got on there, it says, one of my favorite sales quotes from, from uh, one of my favorite quotes from salespeople, oh yeah, these people like me, I'm going to get the deal. <laughs> We're not in the business to people to like us. We're in the business to people to trust us and feel comfortable doing business with us. And how do we do this? We got to go through the progression. We got to take action. We got to overcome those fear of rejections, right? I'd rather get a no than to think about it and, and me following up, trying to beat a dead horse to drink water. Um, or yes, I love yeses, right? <laughs> I love yeses more than no, but I'll take a no any day over, over I think about it. Here's the other thing is, you will never improve your, your skills if you don't take action. You got to take action. Why? Well, how do you know, your, how, do you know how to improve? What, what are you looking to improve to if you're not taking action? Serious though, ask yourself that question. You know how I learned the sales process that I learned now? I would go to class, true story. I would go to class, I would take what was taught in the class, I go to three, four appointments that day, I would get my face kicked in, I come back to the class, it was every Wednesday, it was uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. I was there every day, I was the first one, I took over that class, I wanna learn this. I said, this is the system that's gonna help me win, and I want to learn this at all costs. Nobody wanted to ask questions on there. Perfect. I build my sales scripts. I build my text scripts. I build everything inside that class. And here's what I would do. I would come back and I would tell my sales trainer, hey, Brad, here's what's going on. I went to this appointment. Yada, yada, yada. Here's what happened. Here's what the seller said. Here's and he would look at me and he's like, man, I feel sorry for you. I'm like, come on, Brad. What do you mean? He's like, I feel sorry for you and the seller. I'm like, you told, oh, no, no, sorry. He would say, did you tell him like that? Is that, that how you asked him? And, then, and he's like, I feel sorry for you and the seller. Like, come on, bro. You're calling me out in front of the class. He's like, but here's what you should have done. And then he would, he would teach me. And then guess what? I would get another opportunity to go do it, but I would not be able to do that if what? If I didn't take action. So you got to remember, you got to take action. I know these are simple things, right? Is number one, take your craft seriously. I'm telling you, sales can change your life, right? Sales can change your life. If you don't uh, train your salespeople, it's going to ruin your, your, your business because you're not going to be able to convert. I don't care if you spend $100,000 in marketing a month. 
If you don't have a good sales process, a good sales system to go off of, it doesn't matter. You can spend all the marketing you want and you're not going to convert because you're not working on your craft. And number two, when, if it's you doing the calls, work on your mindset. Guys, I'm a big believer that 80% sales, sales is 80% mindset and 20% 20, 20 tactics. Here's why I say this. Because I've given so many people all these one-liners, all these secret phrases, and all these, you know, punchlines and all that. But do they really believe what they're saying? Remember that. Do you? Do you really believe this? And I've seen this mistake. I see this mistake a lot with, with like sales managers and business owners where they hire someone. And the first thing they do is they put them on the phones and give them a script. And that's where the revolving door in our business, especially when it comes to wholesale sales, is huge. Because we don't, we don't understand and we don't change the mindset of that individual, how they look at things, right? How they look at people, how they look at relationships, how they look at money. And we got to start doing that. So I say this, I'll say this last thing is that uh, if you guys want to learn more, you know, I'm going to throw that in there. I don't know if you can take out your phones right now. Everyone, everyone take out your phones and, and, and take a shot of that. I have a disc. I'm building a discord community. I'm not going to sell you anything. Don't worry. I'm building a discord community because I want to give back. How many of you guys have been, have been following me for a while and have been uh, watching my stuff and stuff? Okay, there's a few of you on here. So I'm taking that to the next level. If you go to this website, you're going to find my socials. You're going to find uh, a couple of things that I have on there. And also, I'm building a Discord community. I highly, 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 highly recommend that you join my Discord community. I don't sell anything on there. I don't pitch you. I don't, I don't do a pitch list. I give you actual things that you can go out and, and apply on your everyday process. And I hope to see all of you in there. Thank you very much. My name is Maxi Menes. I appreciate you guys. Guys, that was incredible, right? Can we get a, another quick round of applause for our guy, Max Jimenez, while he grabs his seat? Again, that was, that was incredible stuff right there, guys. You know, biggest takeaway I had was really going back to the mentorship, right? And it doesn't matter if your mentor is alive or if your mentor is dead, right? Anybody else in the room listen to any Jim Rohn? Jim Rohn quotes, Jim Rohn motivation, great stuff, right? The guy is... He knows, he gets it, right? So I think the cool thing about what Max brought up is that, again, it's, it's not taking action just to take action, but it's taking action with a specific outcome in mind, right? Can everybody else agree with that, that it's not just to take action? Anybody can get on a treadmill, right? Anybody can get in that little hamster wheel and run around in a circle, but is that actual action? No, that's just you're repeating the same thing over and over again. So I love how you know, Max was really intentional about when you are learning something new, when you are reading a new book, make sure you're ready for it. If you're reading a book on burrs and you're currently trying to figure out how to wholesale, is that book on burrs going to help you get your first wholesale deal or is it just going to confuse the shit out of you and now you don't know whether you want to do a burr or whether you want to do a wholesale, right? So again, it's be intentional with your learning. Be intentional with what you're trying to grow in because if you're intentional, you're going to see those intentional results. Guys, I want to bring up our next special guest.